and welcome back to a Vixen Studio tutorial. Hello my friends, it's been a long time. I do apologize, my life has been absolutely crazy. Uh, graduating college, getting a new job, um, it's been a journey. And uh, I know this is long overdue and I do appreciate everybody sticking with me and encouraging me to keep these coming and um, I hope you enjoy this one. It's been a while since I did one of these. I'm a little rusty, not really sure where to start. Um, so I guess I'll start with, uh, I guess I'll just do a quick rundown of um, background selection and horse selection, uh, choosing the right stock, what, uh, the, one of the, the most important things I think about is for the stock's lighting sources to match. So if you automatically don't have a matching light source, or like right off the bat don't have a matching light source, you're gonna kind of have a hard time making your finished product believable. Um, it's really important and it's really hard to fake it if it's not at least in the ballpark. Um, so do yourself a favor and choose stock um, that matches each other that match each other in lighting the easiest way is to get your horses see this horse the stock he's a little bit washed out um, the background is really crisp and has a really high contrast so we kind of want that on the horse uh, so a really 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 easy way to do that is to go to image auto tone I'm oh, sorry, not auto toad image, auto contrast, and boom, you got a matching contrast pretty close um, without a whole lot of effort. Another way to do it is auto color. Sometimes um, that'll look okay. I don't know. Just hit all three, and if if it looks like it's matching up, then keep it. If not, no biggie. Um, another thing I do is. I like to smudge my horses. Um, as I've kind of progressed as an artist, I've kind of gotten rid of the heavy smudging I used to do when I was uh, <laughs> younger, quote unquote. Um, I don't know, I've just kind of graduated, I think, to a uh, uh, less smudged horse, kind of. I, I really prefer to keep a lot of the definition that I can. Uh, while also kind of blending out some roughness, if that makes sense. Um, it's just kind of a, a a delicate formula I've kind of put together over the years, but um, it, uh, my it's just always evolving, you know, as an artist. It, you just try new things and you experiment, and you're like, oh, I like this, or like, oh, I, I like that, and, um, you know, you just kind of blend every, every all your thoughts and influ outside influences together and create your own thing. Um, and if you go back and watch my videos, you'll see what I mean. Uh, I think the first one I released was in 2015, or maybe early 2016, I don't remember. Um, but you can definitely see the difference in the, the technique there, and, and the style, really, too. Um, so anyway, so what I do to kind of just start a base uh, smoothness, I guess, to my horses are... Um, filter noise, reduce noise. I keep the same settings. I don't really change them. Um, these work for me. They'll work for you too, probably. Um, cool. So, this is the point where I usually start cutting out. So I will go ahead and do that.
All right, so now that horsey is cut out, um, the next thing I do is if his feet are in the grass, blend, blend that in. Perf. Eh, can fix that up later. I don't know, actually, I think this grass is pretty tall. It's important to pay attention um, to how tall your grass is, yeah. So, this horse, I mean, maybe he could be standing on that rock, but he should actually be pretty low in the grass. I wonder if I've got... Nope. Okay. So, he's gonna have to erase more of his feet. Not that much. Um, some of his feet. Eh, this part can be kind of annoying sometimes. You know what? Eh, it'll come back to that. Okay, so, or so. I'm not gonna lie, this background is not particularly um, flattering. I, I liked it because of uh, the color scheme and I liked the... Um, wild and free vibe, but I don't know if this is the right stock, but you know what? Okay, here's <laughs> here's a good lesson in uh, if you've come pretty far and you're kind of like, eh, I don't know, like I really want to make this work, I don't know if it's going to, this is one of those things where you're just going to have to be like, um, we're going to make this work. I don't care how, don't know how, but it's going to work. It, it'll be okay. Like, don't panic! Like, if this happens to you, like, don't freak out. Don't panic. I mean, it's okay. Um, <laughs> it'll be okay. Uh, alright. So, anyway, if it gets really bad and I'm really hating it, I'll just get a different background. It's not a big deal. Okay. So, for this guy, basic horse prep, smudge. Uh, I set mine to about f between 4 and 5, depending on the stock. If it's pretty good quality like this, um, I usually do 4, but I think I'm going to go with 5, because I kind of want this guy smoothed, smoothed out. It's pretty simple. Just This is, um, I'm using, for those who don't know, I'm using a Wickham tablet. Uh, they're not cheap, but if you're serious about art and you really want to see your work improve, I would definitely uh, recommend getting one. Um, you buy a refurbished one or a used one, they're really not that bad. You could probably find one for, I don't know, less than $100, like the bamboo line. Um, they're great tools, especially for this, this purpose. So what I'm doing um, is I'm just kind of dragging on my tablet, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I'm pushing down pretty hard. My sensitivities are pretty light, um, and I like it that way. <laughs> so I have to um, press rather hard to get the effect I want. And this is just kind of what's natural for, for my hand. Everybody's is different. Everybody has a different grip, a different natural pressure. You know, like when you're holding the pen, so you'll just have to adjust your settings accordingly. If you have a mouse, then <laughs> you don't have to worry about it because you're not using pressure. Um, you're just, you know, it's kind of one size fits all, and then you're definitely gonna have to play more with the settings up here. Um, if you can't, if you don't have a uh, touch sensitivity device. And this is just kind of a more intuitive way of doing this, in my opinion. Like, I understand not everybody can afford a tablet, or this is, you know, but if you're if you're really serious about it, then def definitely I would I would invest in one for sure. Can be done with the mouse. Um, I think I demonstrate in like my first video uh, how you know all these basic prep things can be done with a mouse, um, but it's definitely quicker and easier with with a tablet your tool belt for sure. I don't know where I'd be without mine. I absolutely adore it. I also recommend if you're gonna have a tab if you're gonna use a tablet 
use the softest pen tips you can find. Oh my god, I cannot stand that grating sound that comes out of them. Ugh, if you don't have the soft ones, like that scratching, just, oh, it's awful. I hate that sound. So, um, and you probably will too. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just, just take my word for it and, and go get yourself some nice, um, soft, soft tips. And for those of you who do know what I'm talking about, it's just the worst, isn't it? <laughs> like, oh. Anyway, this guy's almost done. The nice thing about the tablet is when you get to sensitive, um, delicate features like this, like the main body is like, you know, whatever. But when you get, <laughs> when you get on these these kind of detailed areas, you can press very lightly and still get a nice soft, um, a nice soft effect without, you know, having to fiddle around up here and finding adjusting your settings and stuff, but I mean, if you don't smudge, then you can just skip this whole step together and, you know, la di da Um... Then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Alright. Oh, sh I didn't even name it. Um... Well... This is for Daemon. Oh yeah, this is going to be a color change slash Flaxen slash Roan slash Pinto markings. Yay! <laughs> so we're covering a lot in one tutorial. I figured I owed you guys since it's been a long time, a long time since I posted one. Um, Damon. Okay. Alright, so the second part, now that that's done, is hair. Now, I adore people who have the ability, artists who have the ability to just completely erase this and free draw a new mane and tail and all that jazz. That is awesome. I love that. I adore it. I wish I could do it. I can't. So here's how I do it. So I use the smudge tool. Always have. Probably always will. Um, for this part. And uh, depending on what I want, I usually range the strength to 90, 94, 95, maybe. Um, excuse me. Um, and I keep it on 2%, or not 2%, two size brush, soft brush. Um, you don't want to use one of these really hard round brushes because uh, you won't get a very natural stroke. I'll show you what I mean. So if I use this, well, I mean, kind of, but it, it pulls it out a lot farther, so the hair comes out a lot more. I mean, if that's what you want, then I guess that's great, but um, for me now, see how, like, if I pull it out how I normally would, it the, the end doesn't fizzle out as much as it does here on the softer brush. See? See that nice, like, um, the nice gradient, gradual taper, I guess, of hair. It looks more natural as hair, I think, in my opinion. So anyway, that's my recommendation for that. So this part can be pretty fun. It does get a little boring after a while, though, because if you've got a lot of hair to work with, it's a lot of pulling. <laughs> because what I'm doing is I'm reaching maybe halfway in and pull, just dragging it out to create you know, the illusion of the wind and blowing in the wind and stuff. Yeah, it gets it, um, it gives it a really natural look, which I, which I love. I mean, that's my style is, you know, the realistic natural hair movement. Um, I really adore people who do all the crazy fantasy hair and, uh, I, I love, love, love it, but it's just not, it's just not my thing, so, um, I really hope somebody does release a tutorial on that, one of the, one of the resident masters we have in game, who do their, their main, their mains and tails that way. Bella comes to mind. Love, love her work. Um, Jello does too. 
NBA did as well. I don't know if she's put anything out recently, but those are three people right there you could ask. La la la. I think I'm going to bump this down because it's pulling out a little bit um, further than I would like. Another way to get uh, a dynamic sort of hair effect is instead of just pulling out, like here, instead of just pulling out, see how it kind of, it, you have to do it a couple times for it to blend properly and then you end up with a bigger strand than you wanted. Um, another way to, to, to combat that is to pull it back. So once you've pulled it out, and you kind of have a strand going. Like say, here I want to turn this into a more of a strand. I want to go like that to kind of um, break up, I guess, the strokes to make it look a bit more natural. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. I don't know how else to explain it. Like what I'm doing. Um, if you're gonna do that, then definitely set it lower you don't want it going too far out. And just pay attention to the direction, uh, the natural movement of the hair that's already there and just sort of mimic it and exaggerate it. That's what I what I do. Uh, I, I think it works pretty well. Um. Yeah, and just just kind of pay attention to what what the hair is doing. If you want it longer um, than what would probably be natural for the, you know, what you've got to work with already on the horse, um, what you could do is put your strength up pretty high. Or you, what you could do if you really wanted to fill it out was is to kind of paint on like eyedropper, maybe like this part of it paint it on, and then smudge the rest of that out to make it look pretty full. Um, I think I've done that before. I haven't done it in a while. But that, that's that's one way I used to do it. I think I do that actually in one of the older tutorials. Uh, but I'm, I'm not a master at, at that at all. <laughs> I would definitely, if you're interested in those really long, beautiful um, painted manes definitely, definitely give one of those three people a, 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 a HMU. I'm sure they'd be happy to show you how, or tell you how. Alright, so we've got a mane, cool. On to the tail. Same thing, um, up the strength up be like four percent this is the same idea just dragging pulling this is so much easier with a tablet if you're doing this on a mouse you're gonna have a harder time getting that um it can be done don't worry no worries but it, it's definitely harder to achieve the same effect of um you know the natural stroke of the, the hair kind of gradually fading out, um, that natural look is harder to achieve with the mouse because you don't have the, the pressure sensitivity working in you, with you um, to help get that. So you kind of have to fudge it. It's, it's a little bit more work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, same idea. Pretty straightforward. Tails take a little bit longer. Um, it's more material to work with, obviously, and it, it's harder to get there. Um, there tends to be a lot of noise on tails, and uh, I'm really not a fan of that, so I tend to have to kind of re-blend all of my tails. That's what I'm doing right now, see how I'm, I'm kind of going over the whole thing and doing what I did on the main, the, push, the, the pushing and pulling to kind of get rid of that noisy texture. 
that tends to build up on the tails. I don't know why. Um, it's always been kind of a source of annoyance for me when I'm working on these, especially dark tails. They, they tend to get a lot of noise, which I do not like. Noise is not good. I tend to get impatient with the tails, and I'm I'm gonna try not to for the sake of this video. Um, if you turn the background off, it's easier to see what you're doing. That's better. Okay, I can kind of understand what I'm doing. So this is kind of a mess down here. This is what I'm talking about, where they kind of take extra time. Oops. Um, because there, there's just a lot more to to manage and work with. But if you, if you kind of sit down and you take your time and, um, you know, just really pay attention to the movement that's there, you're going to get a really nice result. This, I guess, in a way is kind of like repainting. Um, this, is, this is a good example of uh, when to do that push back thing I told you about earlier. Where you're not instead of just like pulling out and then you end up with these weird like I mean I don't like that, but you see what I mean, like the the awkward gaps right here where the cut the original cut job was. It's harder to hide that if you don't do the the pull in. It's harder to hide that. That's better. I might um might even come back with a uh, wider brush to kind of fill this in because I, I don't really like how awkward it's looking. with that. If I get quiet all of a sudden, I apologize. It's just because I'm I'm focusing. Um tend to zone out a bit when I'm working on these sometimes. I'm sure, I'm sure you can relate. <laughs> That's good. Nice. Alright. Got our hair. Cool. Alright. Basic horse prep is done. Save. <laughs> Do not forget to save. Um, alright, so I'm really not digging this background contrast, so I think I'm going to experiment a bit to try to get it less obnoxious, in my opinion. Um, that's better. Alright, now you can kind of see more of the horse, and I like the contrast at first, but it's not really working with for what I want to do. Um, but I, I still do like the, uh, the background itself. I'm just not... Eh. Alright, there's time. That works. Okay. A lot of, um, a lot of this is just, you know, playing with <laughs> layer, layer settings too. You can get some pretty cool effects if you just spend a little time, um, a little time with that. Anyway, okay, so this is the dude. He looks so cool. Okay. So this is a roan, a black roan Sabino, silver roan. Sabino. Cool. 
So what I'm going to do first, I think, is color change. Right, order is very important with this kind of stuff. Um, if you don't do it in the right order, it's going to be going to be harder. I mean, this is just the way I've always done it. It works well for me, so I, I guess I can't say that. But I, this is what I would recommend, <laughs> I guess. Okay, so for color change, the way I do it is r really, really simple. Um, select, load selection, so you're going to select your horse slayer. I take the game horse, the game art, and I literally just eye drop her. Kind of like what I think the color, like the mid-ground color would be. So like that, dark gray. On a new layer, not on your, your horse layer. Um, I'm just going to put it where all the, the brown from the bay is. Soft brush just for this. He doesn't have any brown on his eyes or belly or anything, so... Da 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 I'm sure there's like a hundred different ways to do this part. <laughs> to do a color change. But this, is, this is just what I found works, works easiest for me. It also depends on what the color change is. Um, if it's something more complicated, obviously more more steps would be take would be needed. Um, but this this works for me for this purpose. Okay, and then hook hit color, <laughs> either color or heat, not hue, um, saturation. Yeah, ta da! I think I'm gonna go with color. I don't want to like lose it completely though. Okay, so I'm gonna put another layer on top of that. This is good actually because it's a brown and you want the light body to keep showing up, but I still feel like it's not quite dark enough in this phase. Oops. If anybody knows a shortcut for that, please tell me, because I I don't know one. <laughs> I feel like a dummy every time I have to go up to the toolbar and get it. Okay. So I want his head darker. Cool. Okay. Ta-da. <laughs> uh, pretty simple one. Um, it also makes it the makes the whole process easier if you choose a stock. Um, that's gonna be relatively easy to color change. Um, so, for instance, if you have a Grio. I would start with whatever the horse's base color is, whatever the dilute is, find a horse stock with the base color and then work from there because, um, I don't know, that's, that's just what I do. Um, this seems to work for me, that's what I would recommend. Um, yeah, cool. So I'm going to merge everything into the scene there. Oops. Cool. Now, I'm not totally satisfied with this color and how it's blending into how it's interacting with the background, so I'm going to play with these auto settings up here real quick to see if it... Perfect. <laughs> um, color palettes, I still want them to be a little bit... I don't know. I spend a lot of time in color balance getting um, getting it just right. 
because it's color, you know, if the horse's colors don't really match the background environment, it's, it's always going to look a little weird. Um, I think that's good. Okay, cool. So the background has a lot of yellows and greens, so I was just adding kind of a, um, I was adding some yellow and green hues to him. Alright, cool, I think we're ready to start Roan. Alright, so my technique for Roan is pretty much stay the same. Um, so I choose the lasso tool, um, the hand lasso tool, and I just kind of draw or trace kind of the outline of the roan where I predict it's, it's gonna go. So this horse is pretty easy because he's, you know, uh, we're seeing him from the side and not the front so there's not a lot to, you know, meander around angles and all that nonsense. I mean it's pretty straight, you know, forward. Um, this was a good example. So once I have my roan outlined, go to select mask, feather, I'll put a feather on it. Whoops. <laughs> Disco pony. Um, and then I hit brightness contrast of the brightness. Yeah, lower the contrast, not, not too much. Just a little bit. We're already working with the black horse. So we don't have to worry about desaturating it. I might just a little bit. So hue saturation, lower the saturation if you wish. I up the lightness a little bit, and then I come back to adjustments, and I up the contrast again. Maybe up the brightness a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. So I spend a lot of time here getting it right, just kind of eyeballing it. Mm -hmm. Done. Not. Okay. <laughs> so, select. Not done yet. Load selection. Now, the best. Now we're gonna add like the roan, you know, the little roan flex. And uh, what I recommend for this is to find like a snowflake brush or create one or a star brush or something and repurpose it. So I have one over here, and I have these settings on it. You go to shape dynamics, and you kind of just set all these jitters on to kind of make it so every time you put it down it kind of shifts position or it switches it, it kind of switches up a little bit every time so you're not just repeating the same brush over and over I'll show what I mean so I'm gonna put it at, well, it's easier to see at the size but see how it kind of jitters around as I'm dragging it it doesn't just go eh, 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 you know um, so I recommend doing that playing with your brush settings uh, gives it a much more natural look and you just paint it on. Look at that. Run flex. Yay! Again, there's probably a hundred different ways to do this, and every artist is gonna have their own way of doing have is gonna have figured out their own their own way of doing this. Um, this is just my way, works for me. Probably work for you too. Um, just going to get all that nice and coated in the roan. Get a little bit on the legs. I'm not too worried about the crazy contrast on the legs right now because we're going to add these Sabino markings to them, so I'm not, I'm not worried about them yet. In case anybody was wondering, because I, I would have wondered that if I was watching this. Okay. Hmm. And I set it to like overlay or something, so it's a little more subtle. Yay! Horsey Roan! Cool. Alright, so that's done. 
merge. Next thing, hair. I really actually kind of like the color this guy's got going on, but oh well. So, what do I do for this? Select the main and the hair. Actually, sometimes I forgot um, if you're going to be doing a main or tail color change. It's probably more prudent to um, wait <laughs> and then do like the whole blending out thing because you'll see what I mean in a minute because it's going to get uh, pretty cray with the uh, ups contrast and, and, and junk. Okay, so adjustment. Up the brightness, lower contrast. Um, for this one, it's got kind of like a yellowy hue to it. So I'm going to turn this one right now, it's got like a green blue color going. So I'm going to desaturate it up the lightness a little bit, just a little bit. That's good. Okay. Psych. Okay. So before you do any of that, don't forget to feather. <laughs> Okay. There we go. All right. Anyway, so what did I do? That turn the contrast down. Um, crap. Yeah. Okay. And then. And yes. And saturation down. Yes. Yes. Very good. Perfect. Okay. And then just like the tiniest hint of yellow. That's too much. Just a little bit. Maybe a little red. No. Maybe a little bit. See, like it's so subtle, but it really makes a difference. Look at that. Cool. Perfect. Awesome. And we've got our basic color change. Um, while this is all going on, I, I like to play with the uh, the auto settings and see what happens. Ooh, I kind of like that. Eh. Actually, yeah, I kind of like that. Okay. So now, on to the markings. In. Okay, I'll start with the base. What I do? They're pretty simple. I just trace them. Not trace them, but you know, best I can. I like to make. Um, you know, we have so many Sabina horses uh, in the game right now, and I, I don't like all of them having the exact same markings because I make a lot of them art. Uh, so I like to kind of put a little flare on, on them to make them a little unique. I think my favorite one I did was for um, unique Sabino markings anyway, was for uh, RMP's Darkling Sun, what's his name? Bot botulum he's he's cool he's got like this she asked me to do a, a skull like a, a horse skull on his face for, for the marking it was really cool um so that was a great idea loved how that turned out Alright. 
Something I noticed the other day. <laughs> I had never noticed it before. But I noticed that the horse Eden horses don't have chestnuts. Isn't that crazy? I, like, I don't know if that was on purpose or just something that was just kind of like an oversight. Um, but I was like, oh my god. I don't have any chestnuts. So, anyway. That's something to think about. Okay. So I've got my uh, outlines here. <laughs> Back to adjustments. Brightness! No contrast. Adjustments. Saturation. Down. Actually, not all the way down. Lightness. It's good. Color balance. So we're lucky here because we have a white. We already have an existing sock to kind of show us what this should look like uh, in terms of hue, so that's nice. Um, we can kind of just mooch off of that. Um, down here. I think that might be too bright. So a lot of this is just eyeballing it and using your your best judgment. Um, I think that's good. You can always have. Um, Low lights to it. Alright, cool. So now we've got our basic mar oh geez, what a mess. Okay. So now we've got our basic color change done. Yay! Now it's cleanup time. So the first thing I'm gonna do is save. Then I'm gonna come back. Hard brush. I work with a five pixel brush now because I upped my um, my canvas to a uh, to a retina standards. <laughs> uh, I wasn't working on them before, and I'm glad I switched. Um, it's really improved the quality of my work. So I'm gonna clean up this whole thing. Let's get these funky edges. Like, do you add socks? I don't know why particularly, but I don't like them. This hoof is like a mess. I don't know what's going on here. Probably shouldn't have erased that. I'll deal with that in a second. Okay. So, see how noisy and like ugly these legs get when you um, 
essentially just like drive the conjure the brightness and contrast just way up. Um, creates this really ugly, pixely, noisy mess that I just absolutely hate. Okay, I think this is where our friend Smudge comes in. Hey. Oh, oh it's like a soothing heating pad or something. It's just perfect. Love it. And it just makes it all go away. That chestnut is kind of a mess. Much better. So I'm gonna gonna have to um, blend these two areas here. So I'm gonna up the strength. Like, I don't know, whoops, 24 maybe, put this way down, because you don't want to be dragging everything everywhere. Okay, no, it's more. There we go. And I'm just gonna smudge them together. Nobody will be the wiser. <laughs> But, uh, oh. I also use the um, really high smudge to kind of deal with the, the graininess on the edges of these. Or if I maybe erase this spot or something, I can kind of um, remedy that by doing this. Details to add. So I'm gonna. I don't like these harsh edges. It doesn't look very natural between the um, pastern and the the hoof. So. Do, 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 do. Add some hair. I honestly don't remember what this was, so I hope it's just part of this this pastern. Because <laughs> I don't know what it is, slash was. Cool. Alright. Cool. Next step. I'm gonna add a little bit of texture to the face markings and the body markings. Really lightly going over the edges with a half smudge to get kind of, you know, that top, that, um, that effect the hair has sometimes. talking about. I can't think of it right now. I don't know what it's called. But it looks nice. Makes it look finished, you know? And I don't do that on the skin, though, because there's not, not, you know, the skinny parts, because it's... Uh, 
<sighs> no hair really to make that texture. This is what I was talking about earlier with like the noise on the tail. Bleh. Can't stand it. Get rid of it. sharpen. I have not sharpened the horse yet. So when I sharpen, at this stage I do um, a first sharpen on the horse, filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. These are my settings. Um, works for me. Really subtle this size, but it does make a difference later on when you're resizing and stuff. Um, okay. So now that everything's pretty much there. Oh, forgot the pink nose. Can't forget that. Towards those pink noses. You could be more exact with this if you wanted to be, but I don't think it. I'm too lazy right now. That works just as well. Alright. Pink nose. I think that's a little bright. Way too bright. That's good. Cool. Awesome. He looks great. Alright. Now highlighting time. Um, pro tip, if you're gonna highlight, I don't recommend using white as a highlighting color. Um, it tends to flatten out your picture and um, it kind of just gives it more, a little bit more dynamics. using plain white. White kind of tends to dull it, dull it out, make it look flat. Not as, not as lively. So I get asked a lot of questions about the highlighting. Um, I, it, it's hard for me to answer them because a lot of what I'm doing is just, is just really instinctual. Uh, when I'm looking at this, I'm looking for, I guess if I had to break it down, places of contrast or areas that I want to emphasize or create a barrier of some kind. Just, I don't know, like it, it's hard for me to describe what I'm actually trying to do with this. Um, all I know is like, all I know is what I want out of the finished result. Um, and I know how to get like I in intuitively know how to get there uh, but I'm always look back and I'm like oh okay well yeah I guess I guess that's how I do it but I could never sit down and be like okay do it here do it there you know like it's one of those just auto autopilot things um, but if I had to put it into words I, I guess what I'm doing is looking for uh, so here's a very um, sharp contrast between the shadow on his cheek and the highlight and I kind of want to emphasize that to bring out the contours in the face so I'm going to put a highlight there. Um, I want to emphasize his eye and the shape of it so I'm going to put one 
under there. I want to emphasize this highlight. Um, I want to emphasize the curve of his cheek. Um, so there's kind of a lot of reasons for why I might put a highlight down. Usually, I guess it all boils down to emphasis, what I want to emphasize, um, what I want to outline. And a lot of that is intuitive decision making, so I, I apologize for not having a better um, explanation for it. But I think, you know, if this is a technique you're interested in, I think uh, it comes with practice and just kind of you know, instinctually knowing what looks good and um, what pleases you, you know. Also use it on the eye. Help emphasize that. This part requires a lot of patience as well. I try to I try to have patience with it. Um, it's very easy to zone out while you're doing this too, which, is, which can be nice, you know, you kind of have a nice relaxing zone out. My brother is watching Moana. I can hear her singing. I love that song. All the feels. Alright. This is going to take a while, I apologize. I'm probably just going to fast forward through most of this. Something's telling me that this isn't actually part of the hoof. So... That's better. God, that was bugging me for like forever. Oh. 
Hmm, we're getting there. No, this takes so long sometimes. But it's so worth it in the end. to smudge. I've sometimes wondered um, what it would look like if I just kept the highlights on smudge because I think it does have kind of a cool look to it. Um, but then I go, nah. Time to smudge. What are you thinking, you fool? It's so satisfying seeing it. It's much. I don't know. Just it just makes it all come together for me. Like this is the unifying element that just you know just takes it to that to that level. so subtle once it's smudged out but it's it's just the bee's knees I just love this effect so much I really don't know why <laughs> I think it's great Slight, but just all the difference, right? Amazing, love it. Cool. Next thing, eyes. The way I do them, that's changed a lot too, but. Half moons. Oops, wrong color. Like that. This is why working on the bigger canvas makes it uh, a lot better. So you can really get in these these nice details. You might not be able to otherwise. We're working with the smaller canvas.
can't forget a shadow. little bit of green down here on his legs to kind of make it look like, I don't know, they belong in the grass. Cool. It just kind of helps blend them in. Don't get, um, try not to get too carried away with these outer inner glows. Um, subtlety, in my opinion, is key here. So what I've been doing is kind of um, using lighting tricks to kind of draw the eye towards where I want it to go first and then um, through contrast and um, highlighting and things like that because uh, I want you to look here first and then kind of notice everything else. So that's my reasoning for doing what I've what I've been doing for the last couple minutes. Cool. The last thing I think he needs is and yet nice. I don't think he needs the blue one. Cool. That looks awesome. Cool. Well there you have it folks. Uh, <laughs> my first tutorial in a very long time. The only thing left to do now is um, to add my, my stamp uh, or to add your stamp or trademark or whatever signature that you employ on your art. Um, thank you so much for watching guys. I really appreciate the support. Um, I really, really, really love doing these tutorials and I really, really love, you know, being a part of this community and, and sharing this, this this stuff with you um it's really it's really a treat um thanks so much and uh i hope to have a new video out soon um i'm about to have a really crazy summer so i will i will do my best i'll do my darndest to get a regular tutorial schedule up and running uh it might be like one every two months one every three months at maybe one a month uh, that's kind of ambitious but i don't know uh, but I really do miss making these and, and I get so many requests for them and so many people say they're helpful and I, I really, I really do like making them. So, um, happy horsing my friends. Thank you for watching.